Part two is about how we train these models. And this is in principle not different from how we trained uh, our feed-forward neural networks and our convolu uh, convolutional neural networks. We still use backpropagation. But here we have a little bit of an added complexity uh, and this goes under the name of backpropagation through time. Which means that actually, uh, if you think about it, um, that since we have, if you think about the unrolled network, we have that the same weights contribute in many different steps. So the, so the error in the future is affected by uh, a hidden state in the past. And this hidden state, of course, also depends on the weights. So we make this, uh, we have to take this into account when we are doing our calculation of the gradients. Yes, yeah, so let's just go back and just for a moment uh, recapitulate what we learned about backpropagation for a feedforward neural network, right? So we had this update rules that we say, okay, we want to take the derivative of the cost function with respect to the weights in the second layer. And we do that by the chain rule. So we say first, our cost function only depends on the activations at the second layer and uh, in turn, the, w, uh, the W's in the second layer depends on these activations. And for the weights in the second, in the first layer, we have to go, we have to t use the chain rule of differentiation one more time in order to get to the point where we can take the derivative uh, of the activation with respect to the weights. So let's try to play the same kind of game. And okay, so there was one more thing here is that we have this kind of bookkeeping where we keep the where we should keep something in memory in order to have not having to calculate things over and over again and this is this derivatives with respect to the activation of the second layer in this case so let's go back to the uh, definition of our recurrent neural network written like this and then we now want to take derivatives. So I'll try to collect a little bit here. So I, I have these I have these three types of weights. I have the kind of regular feedforward uh, weights in the f from the input to the first hidden layer. And then I have the regular feedforward uh, weights to the second layer called W1 and W2. And then I have these weights for the propagation across time. So if I look at these expressions, I can see that I can essentially write the derivatives with respect to the weights in the, in the first layer and the forward in time uh, according to the same rule. So I've tried to collect that here um, in this notation. And then uh, for the weights in the second layer, we get this usual quite simple expression. Okay, so but now comes the complicated thing because we need to take derivatives of the cost function with respect to the activations. And now we have uh, the first term I've written here is the usual uh, chain rule term where we go, go through uh, the uh, cost function dependence on the second layer uh, at the same time point and then we, we, take, we take the normal chain rule. But then notice the second term. The second term we actually have to calculate derivatives across time. So this is because our cost function also depends on the uh, it also depends on the activation of the network in the future. And the future activation depends on the activation at time now. So we have to apply this recursion where we calculate uh, derivatives in this manner. And this is the backpropagation through time. So let me just say it again. The cost function depends on activation in the in the future, and our uh, and the activation in the future depends on the activation now because of our signaling forward in time. Yes. Okay. So a problem in in deep learning that we will attack uh, with different uh, clever initialization uh, methods uh, um, 
uh, next week will will uh, will is what is called vanishing and exploding gradients. And this, so I could have talked about this already when I talked about few four neural networks, but it's especially a hard problem in recurrent neural networks. So let me try to uh, tell you how this comes about. So let's try to make a simple network here. We have only um, one input, one hidden unit, and we have uh, a sequence of length capital T. And now we assume that the cost function only depends of on the on the on the last time step. So it's an architecture as I've drawn here on the left. So there's only one single target to predict. So it's a many to one problem. So that means that the derivative, the kind of explicit derivative of the cost function with respect to the activations 